and welcome to another fright-having and ball-grabbing episode of What Happened, the investigative YouTube-style pop culture media show that rubs the radishes and pets the piglets to find the most interesting and or wacky development tales in the video game industry. And you can't use the word wacky without immediately thinking about googly eyes. And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. You can't think about googly eyes without thinking about Rare, who are the masters of that particular form of ocular-based comedy. While we've covered many a game from their storied history, and I'm sure at least one or two more in the future, you can't honestly say that any of them were terrible, unplayable disasters. But today's subject often gets saddled with the reputation of representing a shift in the legendary studio's output, which, as we'll see, is not really warranted. So spike up your hair and grab the nearest weapon or household object that isn't nailed down as I answer the question, what happened to Grabbed by the Ghoulies? <laughs> After finishing up the second adventure of their iconic bird and bear duo, the Banjo team over at Rare were looking to do something radically different for the next project, and hopefully less complicated than having to weave together massive interconnected bios. As designer Greg Mayles recounted in Rare Revealed, the making of Grab by the Ghoulies, this project started not with a particular design in mind, but instead with a rather peculiar name. He recalled hearing someone at Rare casually bringing up a certain British schoolyard expression which described the act of, well... <clears throat> And then thinking, that would be a great name for a game, which it did after one clever tweak to the spelling, of course. Since the team were starting new, then they wanted this to be a straightforward experience that anyone could pick up and play and have a spooky good time with, and look to things like Scooby-Doo and various silent horror comedy films as inspiration. Alongside that, since TUI pushed the Nintendo 64 to its absolute limits, and with Nintendo finally shipping Dolphin dev kits to its partners, the Banjo team decided to start fresh with this much shinier Cubic hardware. Their original vision for Ghoulies was fairly similar to what they eventually shipped, a fun, cheeky take on horror tropes with tried-and-true beat-em-up action gameplay, having players use their fists and a variety of weapons to take out hordes of skeletons, spiders, zombies, and other baddies straight out of Boo! Haunted House. Now, despite Rare having then released a string of platformers, racers, and fighting games, comedic horror and brawling wouldn't be too out of their old wheelhouse considering in their NES days they'd also worked on the likes of Beetlejuice, Battletoads, and, and wait, they actually developed Boo Haunted House, like for real! The earliest versions of Ghoulies, according to an old archived Q&A on Rare's site, circa 2004, stated that the game was originally going to have more adventure elements, where the player would have more choices in which areas of Ghoul Haven Hall to explore next. I asked two former Rare staffers, Chris Sutherland and Steve Mails, about this, but neither could really recall that being an early part of the design. Regardless, our plucky hero Rick, I, I mean Cooper, still had to venture into Ghoulhaven Hall to rescue his girlfriend Amber from the clutches of Baron Von Ghoul of the Von Ghoul dynasty, with the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay largely composed of action-heavy brawling. Development kicked off with the GameCube starting in October of 2000, and was worked on for a very brief period of time before it appeared at E3 2001 in a Behind the Closed Doors presentation. The footage you see here shows off several things that would ultimately not make the final game, like Amber appearing as a playable character along with various enemies or ghoulies that were left on the cutting room floor. It should also be noted that around the time of this presentation, the name grabbed by the ghoulies had leaked out, but instead of it being attributed to a new game altogether, it somehow erroneously became the rumored subtitle of a new Conquer game, as it certainly had that 
a familiar nutty conquerish flavor to it. As the team continued to flesh things out, they eventually started adjusting their initial design, something that was confirmed to me by artist Steve Males. Initially, the aim was to have the player fighting off loads of baddies at the same time, similar to Dead Rising that released three years later. But as time went on, baddie numbers were decreased in favor of enemies with much more specialized attacks. Still just as hectic, but with a bit more strategy. The more free-roaming adventure elements, if they ever existed, were also then paired back as the team honed in on a more linear structure, tasking the player to clear out each room in a set path, almost like a spooky amusement ride. To spice this up though, they decided to add various gimmicks or modifiers to each room, such as time limits, lower health, having to hunt for a key, or killing a specific enemy type to keep things fresh. So while things were going relatively smoothly with the design, Ghoulies, like almost all rare games I've covered before, found itself at a bit of an impasse when, in September of 2002, Nintendo sold their stake in Rare over to Microsoft. While this didn't affect the game's development in any massive way, it did change the perception of Ghoulies a great deal, as it was originally intended for GameCube users and not the typical Dorito-loving Halo slash DOAites that typified the Xbox fanbase. Far worse, though, was the fact that due to sheer luck buoyed by various other rare projects getting either retooled or cancelled, Ghoulies was now suddenly thrust, rather unfairly, into the spotlight of being the first title under this new and very unexpected partnership. 